So analog stem mixing, in this case, um, we're going to be working on the Neve, the 5088. Um, let's just have a quick look through this now, um, channel strip wise, if we start here at the end channel, this is the stereo channel, 9 to 16 stereo, 1 to 8 in mono. But the stereo channel, two inputs, we have bus control, we have auxiliary options, we can set up some reverb, some delays perhaps. Most importantly, one of my favorite features, a width control here. Now we've seen these on master buses and different sort of outboard um, for, the, for the final stereo file. But in this case, individual control of the width in mono and stereo, pushing it out super wide. We'll go through some examples, panning, and then punching it back into mono. So very simple channel strip and similar sort of thing corresponds on the mono strips as well. We have a bus section over here that we can send to. We can have some outboard inserts on that, APR 2500, etc. blah, blah, blah. And we can have our effects returns if we want to set up some reverbs or effects and we'll send from these points here. Um, yeah, so this unit, yeah, four, five, six years, seven years old maybe at this stage. I got it signed by Rupert himself before it left the factory, which was, uh, yeah, a nice wee touch. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice wee personal touch to have the manufacturer on a product like this. So without further ado, let's delve in and uh, take a wee look. So I've set up the routing already on this and in somewhat groups. So if we kind of start at this end. Firstly, the routing will be in through the 5052s or the 5051s down the channel strip and towards the master bus. So um, yeah, the first one to eight, let's go through these here. So I've kick drum on one, I've hi-hat, little hi-hat on two, I have my 808 left and right, my shaker left and right, sub, my ARP, the OB8 playing the chords, the Prophet 6, the Vox as a group, the small Vox hits, the VP330, the Matriarch, panned left and right, then some secondary synths, the polyrhythm, uh, some white noise on that, and then my effects returns are coming in on 24. So let's have a quick wee listen to see what's going on there. We'll just mute these because we are rooting through so we can all hear and the solo function doesn't work. Okay, so if we listen, quickly. Here's our kick drum. Small hi-hat on two, our 808s. Our percussion, shakers. Our soap. Our arm. Chords, the OB8, Prophet 6, I'll come back to the vocal, vocal hits, VP330, Some second synths, they're the white noise, you can hear that in a second. And the polyrhythm subtly panning. Our effects returns, the reverbs, and our vocal. Okay, so that's all our stuff piped in, just pretty much straight in. No EQs, no silk, no nothing. So let's start having a look at some of these features on the penthouse. So if we, let's say, we'll just take out all of these musical elements and take a quick look at our shakers and hi-hats. I, uh, I think they need a little bit of brightening up. And uh, let's listen to them. Yeah, we'll just get rid of that kick for a second. Let me just take a look over here at our shakers on the penthouse. We have a silk feature here, harmonics. It's all about the harmonics of this. So if we bring these up, you can hear 
That extra sheen, that extra warmth slowly been applied. Take them out. And in. Wow, big difference. And the blue, the blue is a, a feature, it's more geared towards the lower end of things, boosting lower harmonics, lower mid-range stuff. The reds focus towards the highs. In. Out. And we'll dial that back a little bit, right? Well, let's just have a quick look at the EQs in this. In fact, let's just punch it out all together for a second and focus on these. So we're boosting 16K, just a little bit of sizzle, a little bit of sparkle at the top end. So let's hear it in the left side as opposed to the right side in the headphone. And hear what that's doing there big time. It's clean, it's crisp, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite smooth. There's nothing harsh about that. And take into consideration, this is a contact plugin you know, that we bounce the audio from. So it's not, it hasn't come through an analog path around like that. This is the first treatment it's really getting in that regard. And back. And let's bring our silk back in. Bring that to 12 o'clock. Oh, that's a little lift. Big lift. Let's try it at 8K. No, I'm not getting the sparkle that I want. I'm gonna dial that back. Punch it back into 16K, back to zero, out all together, and back up to neutral, and let's bring that to about one o'clock, if even. And then what we're gonna do, jump back down now, and we're gonna listen to this now in context with the rest of our drums. 808 in, our other little hi-hat, and our kick drum. Wee bit bright, wee bit bright. Let's dial that back. And let's hear some other elements. Holly thing, maybe. Alright, let's punch the silk out. Disappears, right? Bring these EQs back up, one o'clock. Silk in. Dial it back a wee bit. I'm back down here. Set of returns in the mix. Pour into this stage. Headphones. Nice, that's coming alive now. Let's have a quick A, B again. So I ran off and mixed down on the previous thing we were looking at or mixing in the box. So I have that here. So let's just do a quick A, B against what we mixed down. No limiters, nothing on that, nothing on this either. Exact same process. Let's just hit the, the stereo uh, bus and that was really it. No limiter or anything like that in the master bus. So here we go. We're listening to that shakers, the shaker adjustment. Obviously the summon, yeah, okay, well, I feel that I have more space to work with on our canvas. I can push stuff around more. I feel like it's after growing from a tennis court to a football pitch now. I have more scope to push stuff and pull stuff around now. It just feels like this once I'm on the desk. So let's have a quick A-B against that, focusing in on them shakers, the little adjustment on the penthouse that we made. <laughs> Take your foot. 
places to the sun. They're silkier. Does exactly what it says in the tin. Little bit of brightness, wee bit of sparkle, just up around 16K. Little lift, that's all that needs, just to bring it up to the forefront. Because the last thing I want to be doing is at the E is at the end stage, at the mastering stage, or my mix insert chain that I have here. I don't want to be adding too much high hand, high end, just solely to compensate for them shakers, because everything's going to be affected then. You know, so I'm dialing in on that now, the shakers, because I don't think necessarily a lot of the other elements need that brightness that the master bus EQ that I may add will give. So it being that I'm liking where them shakers are sitting, let's focus on the next element. Let's say the sub, okay? So if we pull everything out again so we can just hear it accurately, what's happening? Okay, there's a sub. So let's jump up here, have a wee look at the penthouse and see what we're gonna do. So, like I mentioned there, the red silk is the preset or setting that's geared towards the high end stuff and the blue towards the low end stuff. So let's just dial that round from zero into the max region. And I can feel that I'm a small set of amphions here in the studio already. I can feel the, the weight being added to this. And that's just the additional harmonics thickening out the sound. And then if we look at this, we have 220, 100, 60 hertz and 35 hertz. Nice options for our bass lines. We can't dial in as accurately as we might do on a plug-in but I have a good feeling about 60 hertz. So let's just feel it out again. Let's feel it out. Let's hear it and feel it rather than just following frequency analyzers, right? So bringing this up nice on 60 hertz, I'm gonna push it to the max so we can just hear the lower notes really hum. There we go. Flexing the cones here in the studio. And let's just jump down to 35 hertz to see what that could do. Yeah, there, all the needles are pinning here. We don't want to do that. That's wasted energy. And let's dial it up to 100 hertz to see what that does. Yeah, more of a resonance thing, but what I'm after is sub, exactly what it's called. So let's just do that. Let's be accurate. Let's keep our time, our efficiency lines all in check and get on with business. Okay, now context, very important. Kick drum. Let's hear them. Maybe Tom, some of that little Checking the headphones. Yeah, I'm liking where that's sitting now. I think um, I think it's got a wonderful, warm, deep, weighty sort of feel to it. I don't want anything up past about 80, 90, 100 hertz really pushing too much. It's all about the sub on this because I have the M10, Model 10 ARP, and that's carrying that lower mid-range um, section for me. So, sub. So, Sounding nice there. Let's just take a look at a few other elements now and uh, see what we can do.
this Model 10R, but I think we need to have a, a little look at that. I think it could do with something just, just a little sort of sparkle, silky, silky sort of action around them high mids. Let's dial it in. Let's see. Let's look at some of the mid range on this. So we have a high Q on the mid. Let's bring that down to about 700 hertz. Push that. Heading into sort of the resonance of a 303 or something like that then. Let's jump up to 1.5K. And we'll take that high Q out so it's a wider Q. And we'll dial it right back. Okay. And I think I don't think there's much up there for us at 3K. I think 1.5K is where I want that. And just for talk's sake, let's see what sort of air can be added up around the top. Not even air, but it's at 8K now, but if we can jump it up to 16. Okay. Now that sort of it brings me to a point I'd like to make really about that and I think the fact that I have that up there and I was just about to say let's look at some air around you know around the top 16k or something like that and some you know some of that around there and I and I have to remind myself and stop and remind myself just because I have this sort of stuff at my disposal or you have these lovely EQ plugins or whatever it is does not mean you have to use them really doesn't and this was one of the biggest lessons i've learned on some of this outboard equipment is just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it all the time you know be it the compressors you can just run through the circuitry you don't have to pull the threshold down the eq the same you can just use the circuitry you can bypass it if you want you can just keep it mixed in the box it's totally down to you it's just what type of paint do you want to use on your canvas do you want an oil do you want an acrylic? What do you want? Like, and it's really that so it is. It all sort of does the same thing, but it's just a different sort of process. That's all.